Hey you guys, it's Bray. Tonight we're here to dissect the Doherty Dozens Mother's Day catastrophe of a video. I had quite a few thoughts, so if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so before we get into this video, I just want to wish anyone who celebrates today a happy Mother's Day. I put something on my community page. If you're interested, you can go and take a read um, or take a couple minutes and read that. I understand that there are so many different types of situations that apply to Mother's Day, and everybody has a different set of emotions when it comes to the day itself. So no matter what your emotions are, if you have any, if you have none, if you're somewhere in between, they are all valid, and I understand. I understand many different scenarios. As you guys know, I keep most of my personal life offline, but just know when it comes to days like this, I really understand many different scenarios that can take place. Your feelings are valid, your emotions are valid, and you all are on my mind. So I wanted to put that in the beginning. Now I'm going to edit this video like I have some others. Excuse Axel. I have uh, edited other videos like this in the past, so I'm going to do it the same way. I will insert little clips throughout and I will give you guys my key takeaways from the video. I want to say in the very beginning, this is the most important thing and the most serious and the thing that I receive the most messages about. The kinship girl is wearing a crop top again in these photos, showing her midriff off. And I, I'm i convinced at this point, Alicia doesn't care. She knows that it's wrong. She doesn't give a shit. She doesn't care. She knows that people make sexual comments directed at this girl specifically and she continues to allow this behavior to unfold she continues to dangle this girl out in front of subscribers as if she is um you know i i don't want to use any derogatory terms because she is a 14 year old girl but i'm sure you guys catch my drift as far as what i'm trying to say here it's despicable don't try to say that you're a savior and you swooped in and saved these kinship kids from a bad situation when, yes, I can partially agree to that being valid, but the other side of it speaks to how she has spread these kids on her social media platform for clicks and views. You've got the kinship girl receiving sexual comments from followers. You've got the kinship boy receiving the same types of comments from followers. And what does Alicia do? She continues to overshare, continues to spread them all over the place. And it's just despicable. It's disgusting and it's inexcusable. A little while ago, there was some talks of this girl possibly leaving the Doherty home. Obviously that hasn't happened as of right now, but the girl was on a kin, or she was on a social media break according to Alicia. And now she's been peppered throughout a little more content. If she is on a social media break, I think that the break should be it. If she's on a social media break, then she should not be in any content. Her being in content, what good has it done for her? That's what I would like to know. And any of you Doherty Dozen fans that are watching this video, just leave your down vote and hate every word that I have to say in this video, although you're still listening to it. Why is it okay for kinship kids to be spread all over Alicia's platforms for clicks and views, knowing that there are people that leave sexual comments that are targeted at these children. Why is that behavior applauded? She's not a savior. She's a fake savior. And I will stand on that until the end of time. So that's the most important thing that I took out of this video, but I want to go through another um, list of some high points and we will just talk about it. So she starts on the video by saying that they are running late. They have an hour to be there. This is a how I get 14 people ready for family pictures vlog. But first, coffee. We accidentally all slept in. We have to leave in one hour. So let's go. All right, we started. I got my makeup bin. 
here and I want to talk about the lack of respect for other people's time that I have seen with Alicia. If you are running an hour late and you have 12 kids to get ready for a photo shoot and yourself needs to get ready for a photo shoot, maybe this would have been a good opportunity to put the damn camera down, focus on getting your kids ready, assist them with their hair and their outfits and make sure that they are not feeling flustered. I remember as a kid, there weren't many situations where we were running late because especially my dad, he was very punctual, always wanted to be five or 10 minutes early to wherever we were going. Those few times where we were running late, I remember it was never a frenzy. I never felt stressed out or felt like I had anxiety because my parent was running late. It was just okay, let's go ahead and get out the door. Like, what can I do to help you with? It wasn't this like running around the house, yelling, screaming, nonsense, chaos that I see with the Doherty's. Alicia is running around yelling at different kids, trying to, uh, you know, do one kid's hair, yelling at the other one because they can't find their shoes. It's just pure madness. And I think that the easiest solution to that would be maybe forego the vlog so that you can actually help your kids get ready. But she opens up the video by starting to do her makeup for the photo shoot. And she makes note that one of her kids slept with no diaper on. And she also notes that hopefully they're almost done with diapers. I think Josh is the only one who needs a haircut. Well, hello, little girl. Tickle. You didn't? Okay, go potty. I think we're almost done with diapers. Why are we sharing bathroom habits again? What is this? Is this some kind of like sick fetish? Because I don't understand why that would be part of content to speak of your children's bathroom habits. It is such a weird thing and she seems to insert it into vlogs way more than it should be. If I was a, like as an adult, I would be mortified to know that my parent was talking about my bathroom habits on their YouTube channel. And the videos are still out there. That is embarrassing. What if the child doesn't want that to be part of videos? It's just so careless. She doesn't give a shit. She proves it all the time. And talking about hygiene and bathroom habits and medical stuff is just part of who she is. She doesn't care. Who cares if it embarrasses the kids? Doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and throw it in the vlog anyway because I'm too lazy to edit. She also allows one of the children to have Doritos for breakfast. I saw a couple people commenting about this in the YouTube comments. Yeah, I don't know. Josh is gonna iron for me. Okay, parents, I have Doritos. I don't have time to make breakfast. We'll have breakfast when we get back. And there's a dog staring at me through the window. Josh is gonna iron. You can get both. And as far as this goes, with all of the shopping that Alicia does, you would think that this would have been an opportunity to say, how about have a granola bar instead of Doritos? Encourage healthier options. How about having a piece of fruit? instead of Doritos. Now she talks about the kinship girl going to the movies with a friend and she compliments the parent of this person by saying that the parent came in and introduced themselves and wanted to know the Doherty's phone number and all of this kind of stuff. Her exact words were, I miss him already. He's a good kid. He's a good kid. I liked him. And I don't like many people. Oh, and I don't like many people. <laughs> and you know what I liked is that, and I'm guilty of this too. I just did that. Okay. In today's world, we just like drop kids off and head on our way. His mom came in, she shook my hand, introduced herself. Gave me her phone number. Really? Then, like, we kept in touch throughout the evening of like their whereabouts. Oh. I, I like them. I like that. I know. Can I take the tag off this? Yeah. That's what good parents do. So maybe Alicia is one of those people who just drops off her kids and then kind of like 
backs out of the driveway and goes on about her merry way. Most parents want to know, where is my child going to be where I'm not there? Who are these people? What's the inside of their house look like? Is it pure chaos? Do these people seem trustworthy? Do they seem a little sketchy? Are there some red flags? Maybe I shouldn't let my kid hang out here when I'm not around. That is what good parents do. They come in, they feel out the place. They want to introduce themselves. Like the, the, the mind blown reaction from Alicia said a whole lot about her lack of protection and what most parents do without even thinking twice about it. Alicia mentions twice that her dog is staring at her through the window, wanting to come in. And what does Alicia do? She continues to put on her makeup, which by the way is Mary Kay, which is part of an MLM. Am I surprised? No, not at all. But if your dog is staring at you through the window, how about let your dog in? This is what Dixie does when she wants to get her in. Is it like, uh, you gonna let me in? Hello, I exist. Hey, that's a lot, boss. I, I don't know, it seems like a bright idea, right? She mentioned how she didn't want to drop off her kids in the quote, Doherty mobile when they went to the movies. Well, because I took this car to drop them off at the movies because I figured, I didn't know, I thought it would be embarrassing to drop them off in the Doherty mobile. <laughs> and this part I just thought was super funny because when I think of being embarrassed, I think the Doherty Mobile is probably the last on these kids' lists. I think that you talking about their bathroom habits, talking about their medical issues, throwing shade at birth parents, and being overall problematic, accepting a sponsorship from Mothers Against Drunk Driving, despite the fact that your content is a problem in itself, so much to the point where the sponsor fired you, I think those are embarrassing when it comes to the children, not the kind of vehicle that you're driving. She also mentioned how one of the kids is probably going to be diagnosed with sensory processing disorder, just like all of the other kids. So she, um, you know, again, is oversharing about the medical stuff. Like it always comes back to their mental health, their medical stuff, hygiene. It's just constant oversharing. Nobody needs to know that all of the kids have sensory processing. If you want to talk about how you and Josh have that, bravo, have at it. But for the love of God, can you stop oversharing about your kids and their mental health, their medical stuff, and other things that will be embarrassing for them once they reach a certain age and they're out of your house? You probably have sensory processing disorder. They'll diagnose you in kindergarten. Oh, Just like the rest of the kids. all right girl dad and i have it too now she mentioned how her dogs ran away uh the other day <laughs> dogs ran away oh, about that. kids crying because the dogs ran away yeah i drove all over <laughs> through that neighborhood Did dixie go? like both of them ran away but dixie came right back and then miracle just went like alicia has flaunted all over the place how she is partners with tile why don't the dogs have a tile why don't they have an air tag why don't they have some kind of bite tag where you can trace their gps location because common sense is let me put protections in place so that god forbid if one of my kids is reckless and leaves the gate open and the dogs get out i have a way to locate my dogs especially when you have the financial means to do so. I understand that that's not in everyone's budget, but it's certainly in her budget. So I don't understand like, why don't they have an air tag or something along the lines so that they can be found in case of an emergency. She then went on to boast about how one of her children really likes to walk around the house without clothes on. And the kinship girl who had a friend over was witness to this child walking around with any without any clothing on. And this to me is just super weird. Again, it's super weird to put it on YouTube. 
I understand that some kids have weird habits like this. They don't like wearing clothes. They don't like wearing pants, whatever. I've heard of this before, but why are you boasting about it on YouTube? Your clothes are down there in age order. So you're the third one from the end. Nope, the other end. Thanks for wearing underwear. We appreciate that. Some of my kids don't like to wear underwear. <laughs> walk around naked he doesn't care he does not oh, care he, he did that yesterday in front of us <laughs> <He's naked. laughs> we're used to it we're used to just walking around naked but his friend was like <laughs> i'm like sorry please well yes you were getting into your bathing suit yesterday sorry that guy's a nudist <laughs> lay's got the full effect of being at our house for the first time <laughs> It's not funny. It's not something that most sane people are going to laugh at, but she certainly focused on that for a little too long. I want to talk about the body shaming that some of her kids have gone through. There are a couple of her kids that have been fat shamed and people on social media are ruthless. We all know that it's not surprising at all, but she went out of her way to mention that one of the kids is a triple XL and then names the child that is a triple XL. And this is the same child who has been fat shamed by people on social media. As a parent, when you know that these types of comments are being directed at your children, that is bullying. And when you allow the bullying to continue by giving the bullies more ammo, you are part of the problem. So at this point, even though I'm pointing my finger at people on social media, I am equally pointing the finger back at Alicia because she continues to feed them more ammo, like telling them that this child is a triple XL. It's just completely unacceptable. I really don't understand. Nobody needs to know what size this kid is. Keep it offline. So the kinship girl ended up going to the movies with a guy that she found his contact and she used to go to school with this kid. Alicia responded and says, does he know we're on social media? And he texted me last night once he got home. Oh, I think you gave me the wrong one. And said, Dash, thank you. I had a great Mom, time with her. Mom, I think he gave me the wrong one. <laughs> Who's this boy? That's so weird. I like his style. Mm -hmm. He really wants you guys to like. When's he coming back? Not soon. Gosh, I hope he comes back soon. <laughs> this is so sweet. Really I like him. This. How did you meet this young man? He just said that's my old school. Right, but did you know him? We didn't like talk. Yeah, but that's cool. And then how did you start talking to him? I'm getting well, old I found and I need to get my life together. We're going to sit here in denial waiting for my Hogwarts Dash. footage. Dash, I think? Oh, okay. He was wearing the dress, bro. Yeah, he was. But I found his contact. Was he a nice kid back when you know him? I don't know. We didn't talk. Okay. Does he know we're on social media? Yeah. They told him that? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want anything I know about this. And the kinship girl responds, yes. I want to talk about this because as we know, all of the Docker kids have their own iPhones, their own phone numbers, their own Wi-Fi connection, all that stuff. And they are active on social media all hours of the day. I kind of want to circle back and ask you guys and get a gauge on what age is appropriate to allow your kids to have their own cell phones and have their own phone numbers specifically where it connects to the internet. Because I know a lot of kids have their own cell phone and it's like they can only call three people and only receive calls from a certain number of people and it's for their safety. But the way that Alicia has done this, these kids have posted things on social media that do not belong on social media. They are able to connect with people that they should not be able to connect with. And whose fault is it? It all comes back to Alicia. Every single issue that I talk about comes back to either Alicia or her husband, Josh.
So you have this kinship girl who has her own cell phone, her own phone number, and she decides to contact this guy that she used to go to school with, and they set up and go to the movies. This is a 14-year-old girl, and I just worry about these kids possibly being catfished. I worry about people meeting them in real life. I just worry about all of the different situations that could happen because Alicia has given them this device that connects to any and everyone. And that is a big problem. These kids cannot do what some other kids do because they are on social media and they're well known. Alicia has opened them up to the dark underbelly that is social media. But either way, tell me, tell me how you guys feel about that one down below. Now, stupid Alicia burns one of the girl's scalp and the poor girl says, ow, and Alicia wasn't even paying attention. She doesn't apologize. She doesn't acknowledge that she burned the little girl's scalp. And it was just really sad because Alicia's yelling at the other kids that they're running late. The other kids are running around. They're talking about Harry Potter, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaws, and all of this kind of stuff. And this little girl is sitting, and she looks into the camera, and she says, I look so beautiful. As Alicia's, like, you know, trying to maintain the circus that's like going on around her. Oh, I was just thinking that. That's so funny you said that. What? I would Ravenclaw. I would Ravenclaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree good with that. Like, so I agree with Oh, they're not Slytherin. Um, not Slytherin is good. Is the Ravenclaw bad or good? They're, well, they're not Slytherin. It, they're it's not just like jerks. you just touch my okay. head. I'm fine, though. Hey. Good job on your... I look so beautiful. She she didn't reaffirm what this little girl was saying to herself. She didn't compliment the little girl. She didn't apologize for burning the little girl's scalp. She didn't apologize for not paying attention. And she didn't um, boost the little girl's confidence when she was saying that she looked beautiful. That moment hurt my heart some because this is also a little girl who has been the um, target of bullying by Alicia's presence on social media. And to see the unfair treatment of some of these kids, like she really took her time with doing one of her bio kids their hair, like really took her time, was engaged and paying attention and then you have this little girl who gets her scalp burned and compliments herself and doesn't even get it reaffirmed by Alicia because there's just such a lack of attention there. Two more things and then I'll close out the video. I want to talk about how one of the kids mentions that their dog Dixie is shedding year round like she sheds this insane amount of dog hair. Alicia is somebody who has shown that she's not in tune with you know, dog health and diet and all of this kind of stuff. After all, she did use human shampoo and human exfoliating body wash in order to give her dogs a bath a few months ago. We all remember that. People wanted to jump at my throat because I called that out. And it's common knowledge. I'm not saying that I'm a vet. I'm not saying that I am a dog whisperer, but I know goddamn well to not use human shampoo and body scrub on my dog's fur. You don't have to be a know-it-all to know that much. But Alicia doesn't care. And what I want to say is with the amount of money that she has access to, she could have her dogs on the best diet. And what does diet tie back into? The health of their fur and skin. The diet ties into anything. So if you're feeding them really cheap kibble, that could be a part of why this dog is shedding an insane amount. And I know the golden retriever, the golden retriever shed a lot anyway. I know that much. But if what this kid is saying is true, where it's just shedding and molting like this ungodly amount of fur, that's probably something that you might want to talk to your vet about, see if switching their food to something a little more high quality could help them out, um, in, uh, incorporating some fish oil with omega-3s, doing something to boost their health so that therefore their skin and hair is 
healthier and it's not molting off. If, again, if what this kid is saying is true, but I don't think Alicia cares. I think she cares about engaging with comments, making videos, blowing money, uh, you know, doing stupid TikToks with whatever kid will put up with her for three minutes. And I think that's just what she does. I don't think that she really cares about a whole lot aside from how much money she's making. The last thing I want to talk about again, and this goes back to the let's just go ahead and embarrass the hell out of these kids. Why not? It's part of content, right? So she, she talks about how one of the kids is now on acne medication and he is not able to put his shirt on until they get to their destination because he will bleed all over his shirt if he puts it on early. Alex can't put his shirt on until we get there or he will bleed on it. His oh, I didn't know that, sorry. I think acne meds are amazing. I've seen them work miracles for people and it's a beautiful thing. But have you ever thought that maybe your child doesn't want people to know that they were on acne medication? Maybe they want people to not ask questions about their acne because it's a really painful part of their skin story. I know acne can be really embarrassing. I went through my own chapter of bad, bad acne. And I'm still dealing with acne scars, which thank God they are getting a little bit better finally. But it's really painful and it's personal. And there are some people that don't want to talk about that chapter. But when you make it a part of your content and every all these millions of people know that your kid was on an acne medication and he's going to bleed on his clothing if he puts his clothing on too soon, like that is so unnecessary to tell YouTube. But she doesn't care. She doesn't give a shit. She doesn't care. And that's the problem. And that's why I continue to talk about her. Um, she constantly does things that are just mind numbing. And it's insane that people still applaud her. People that don't like the Doherty Dozen are still the big bad bullies. And Alicia is just the shining star among the family vloggers. It is just like mindless and these people are, some of them, I'm convinced, like the people that co-sign some of the stuff that she does, in my opinion, I think that they just have zero logic and half of them are, it's almost like trying to have a conversation with someone who's just like, you know, got no brain. Uh, that's how I feel. That might be unpopular. I don't really care. So either way, that's going to be it for now. If you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.